Hello everybody, Angela here. Um, I seem to be having issues with my camera thing, but anyway, what's new? <laughs> um, I had tried to make a video with my son of a Michaels haul like a week and a half ago and I just never got it posted or edited or anything like that because I don't normally edit. Um, I know why. All right. Um, took some of that glare away by shutting off my TV. So I've been watching the last uh, couple days the Ted Bundy tapes on Netflix. Uh, it was super interesting because I was not even born yet when he started murdering women and I was in high school when he was executed but it was very interesting to hear the tapes and to have all the investigators talking about it and everything. But anyway, <laughs> that's why I had the TV on because I just finished the whole series. Um, so what I've been doing, I'm still working on my daughter's never-ending afghan. I'm on the seventh Karen Big Cake, and it's the last one. Um, hopefully it will be done in the next few weeks. <laughs> it's definitely going to be queen size. If I remember, because I normally don't edit, um, I will try to put a picture of when I was crocheting on it the last few times when I've gotten pictures. It is big. Um, it's a virus pattern, and she chose the cherry compote uh, Karen Big Cake. So I've been working on that, and then um, I decided I wanted to start making, I wanted to try making mittens, which is so funny because Summer from Summer Tips and Stitches did the same thing. Uh, it was last Friday that I started thinking, you know what, I want to try making mittens. Um, so the pattern that I found is a yarn inspirations pattern, and I'll link to it. Um, and I really like it. It's a good pattern. Um, I've only had a couple issues with the pattern, um, and that's when you're, um, <clears throat> making the top of the mitten and the top of the, well, mostly the top of the mitten. Uh, they have you double crochet two together, but the numbers there don't match up for me. So, I mean, obviously I could figure it out. But I've made three pairs of mittens. I have a picture of the first set. I'll try to get that in here too. So maybe at the end I'll put the pictures. Yeah, that's what I'll try to do. That way I don't have to go back through the whole video. Um, and then I made a second set. And then this is the set that I made yesterday. This is for a child. But anyway, uh, she loves rainbow. So it's a super simple pattern. Um, the cuff is single crochet in the back loop until you're a certain height and then you put them together and then you work in the round and it's half double crochets all the way uh, to the top and then you double crochet two together um, and then you go back and you work the thumb into the gusset that you made on the first um, you know, when you're doing the, the body of it. So anyway, I have a pair of those mittens and she loves rainbow. So I decided to also make her and I, oh, the, the yarn that I used for these, it's Red Heart Super Saver Mexicana, which is rainbow. I don't know why they didn't call it rainbow, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so I didn't have enough Mexicana to make a hat and scarves, but I figured if I mixed it in with another yarn, I could definitely make them. So I just last, uh, let's see, week and a half ago when I tried to make the Michaels video with my son, um, I bought three of these um, at Michaels. See, it's also rainbow. It's homespun stripes and the colorway is circus. Um, and it has the black thread that holds all of the fibers together. Anyway, so I used that to make a hat with the Mexicana, like I crocheted them together with both strands and I made her a little hat and then I made a messy pom-pom which I learned from um, the Canadian crotcheter, Debbie. <laughs> I don't know when my brain lost that. When I was a kid, I made tons and tons of pom-poms. My grandma loved to have me make pom-poms. And so we had cardboard, like a, you know, a circle, circle of cardboard with a cut and then a circle here. And you had to wrap all your yarn around it. It's a lot like the pom-pom makers they sell today, but it was with two pieces of cardboard. 
and then you had to cut between the pieces of cardboard and tie it off. So Debbie from the Canadian Crotcheter just wraps her yarn around whatever is sitting there and then ties it off and cuts it. And so I've done that for pom-poms on the last couple hats I made. And they're pretty cute, messy, big pom-poms. So, um, and of course this had the purple, red, and yellow from that uh, homespun. That's what was in there. And then I moved to the scarf and the scarf ended up with the purple and blue and then uh, the Mexicana on the edges. And then I did little things. So, uh, so I've made, let's see, three pairs of mittens, two hats, two scarves. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, any projects that I finished. It's been too long since I've made a video because I don't even remember what other projects I might have finished. Um, but when I did finish other projects, I kept going back to working on my daughter's <laughs> Afghan. So anyway, if I remember, uh, I'm going to try to remember. How about that? I'm going to try to remember at the end of this video to put in a bunch of photographs that I've been taking of her Afghan and the other things I've been making. So that's about it. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I have not regained all the feeling in the tips of my fingers. And at this point, I'm not sure if I will. I mean, I hope I do, uh, but it's not severe anymore. Like I can feel it's just not normal, which probably doesn't make sense if you don't have neurological issues. But, um, you know, like there's so many of us seem to have in this crochet community seem to have chronic illnesses. Not everyone, obviously, but a lot of us do. And I think part of the reason for that is that when you have a chronic illness, you cannot let yourself overdo it. If you overdo it, you pay for it, not just that day, but for several days, a lot of times. And so sitting and crocheting is a way that I kind of keep myself from overdoing it, but still keep my mind stimulated and feeling kind of productive, even though I'm sitting. So I think there's a lot of us like that. And I just think it's really nice to have this community where we can kind of come together and show what we've made and have people appreciate it. Um, I think the general public has no idea how much work crocheting things is, you know, and figuring out patterns and, um, you know, just working with, with the yarn all the time. I have, I went to a spinning and weaving group, uh, last week that meets in my town and they also dye their own yarn, which is really exciting to me, but I would love to learn how to spin. So they ended up giving me a spindle, a drop spindle, and some um, fleece, I guess maybe it's called. And I tried working on that a little bit, but very difficult and frustrating. <laughs> um, they're having a spinning workshop uh, next month that I'm going to try to go to because I'm interested in that. And I'm very interested in the dyeing of the yarn. And so I also started watching a yarn dyer here on uh, YouTube, and I think she's called Kim, C-H-E-M, like Kim Dye, Chemical Dye, uh, I, I'll put, I'll put the link in the description, but she does the most amazing things, and the one that I love the most is using Easter egg dyeing pellets, like, you know, after Easter when they go on sale, I think I'm going to buy a few boxes of that, and I might try dyeing just some plain yarn that you can buy online, some white um, natural fiber yarn and see, because that looks really fun. So I'm getting more wrapped up into fiber arts in general, not just crochet, but right now it's still all crochet. So anyway, <laughs> all right, this is getting really long. I'll talk to you later. Um, hopefully it won't be so long between videos. Um, I might be able to get the video of my son and I at Michael's, maybe, maybe not. Um, but anyway, all right. Talk to you later. Bye.